Welcome back to part two. Okay, so if you haven't seen the beginning, uh, go and see the other part, but we continue. So what we are designing is this, okay? So to start with, uh, let's begin with this blue bar here. Now, this body part here is equivalent to the entire document here, the entire website. So everything we're going to put that we want to display here will be in this body part. So now there's a new tag that we have to learn called div. Now this div is equal to simply a box. And that's exactly what we want since we are creating some kind of a box here. So let's create a box there and it's called a div. Now inside this box, we have the word Facebook and then we have this sign up button. So let's put, for us, we are putting my book and let's leave a space and put the sign up here like so. Okay. So if we go and refresh our website, we see that we have that text here, but it doesn't exactly look like this now, does it? So let's uh, style the box a little bit more, especially with the color, okay? Now, in order to do this, let me leave some space here. Let me do this. Okay, so that I see that uh, the word is contained inside this div. Now, by doing this, I haven't broken anything. If we go back here, we'll see that uh, everything is exactly the same because white space doesn't matter. Now, if I go in the div, opening div, put a space and then type the word style like that. Style equals open and close inverted comma. When the browser sees this, it's going to know that whatever information is in these brackets is used to describe how to display this particular box, the div. All right. So for example, let's give our div a specific height, okay? Because right now, uh, our div is actually here, but we can't see it because it's completely flat. So let's give it some height of some kind. So in order to do that, uh, let me go in here in the style and just say height like that, simple as that. And then I'll put a full colon and then I'm going to put 100 and then I'll put PX. So let me explain this. So this is obviously the property we're talking about height. We're telling it that the height, now if we put a full colon there, we are saying the value of the height is this part. Now PX stands for pixels. So every screen has dots on it that are called pixels. So we are using pixels as the unit for this thing to know how much to actually give that height. So if I save this, go back here, refresh, we still see nothing. The, the div is actually there, but because it's transparent, we can't see it. So let's give it a background color. So I'm just going to go here. Now you see, at the end of the PX, I've put a semicolon, which means I'm telling it that what I'm going to type after the semicolon is another property. This one is one property. We're going to type another one here called background color. Now, this is the reason why I'm using Sublime Text. As you can see, it gave me some suggestions there, which makes typing very easy. All I had to do was press enter, select what I want, press enter like this. Let me do that again. So I can move using the arrow keys on my keyboard to choose what I want, and then I just press enter. So that's why I'm using Sublime Text instead of normal notepad. All right, so background color. Now, this is a uh, weird here. We can, we, we can type a color here directly. Let's, let's write something like black and put our semicolon there. If I go back, I refresh. Now you see that there's a bar there, okay? which we are getting closer to this, but the color we want is actually this one. So how exactly do we get this color? We can try to guess, but that won't be very accurate. So this is where Photoshop comes in. So I open Photoshop here. Now, if you don't have Photoshop, don't worry because there's another solution apart from Photoshop and we're going to see what that is. So if I get the color picker from Photoshop and select this color right there, it's going to show me the color there on these uh, color swatches. Then I can click there. Once I click, 
uh, once I click there, I can go down here where there's a hash and there's a bunch of numbers here. So this is showing me the color that I have selected. So this is the code to that color, 3C5A99, right? Copy. So I'm going to copy that. Cancel. And then I'm going to come back to my text here on the background color. Instead of just saying black, I'm going to put that code. But for the browser to know what type, what, what I'm using, I'm, this is just not a, uh, the word black. What I'm using is uh, this type of color. I'm going to put a hash at the beginning like that. Hash and then the color like so. So if I go back to my browser and right click, you see that the color has actually surfaced, which is uh, pretty neat. Th that's exact same color there and there. Now, if you don't have Photoshop, that's fine. Just uh, open the image. Now this image, just check the link in the description and this image is provided. Uh, you can download it there. Now you check this image and open it with uh, paint because paint comes with windows. So definitely everyone will have paint. So we'll go here and click on this color selector, the color picker, and then click on that color that we want. And then go to what uh, edit colors here, click on edit colors. And then this thing comes up, which will show you what color you have actually selected. So here it says red, green, and blue. So there's another way to actually display the color instead of using this hash, we can say RGB, which represents red, green, and blue, because this is what we have from Notepad. We don't have the other hashed uh, version. So we're going to select the red, paste it there, comma. Let's go back and select the green, come and paste it there, comma. And then let's come back uh, for the last time and get the blue, copy, and then paste it there. So you notice I'm putting commas here. So to show it that red stands is this amount, green is this amount, blue is that amount. Now the minimum colors you can, uh, the minimum numbers you can put here is zero and the maximum is 255. So you can create your own colors by just changing these numbers here to numbers between 0 and 255. Okay, so let me save this and we go back. We're going to notice that nothing has actually changed. Okay, so that's how you use Photoshop to get your colors and that's how you use Paint as well to get your colors from a specific website. Okay, so let me close this because I won't be needing them anymore. And we continue. So the next thing that we're going to do is change the text color. As you can see, the text is quite dark so let me change that by doing, because here we did background color. Now for text, it's called color, just like that. And we want the color in this case uh, to be white. So we can write white like that. But if you check here, it's not exactly white. It's a little bit bluish. So I have the code for that color here. And that code is, um, let me just copy it here and put it there. So here we are using we are using the hash version. So just copy these numbers here and put in your uh, uh, website as you are following along. And as you can see, there is the color we've changed. And then we can change the font size to make it bigger. So now I want a font size that is um, uh, quite big in here. So I'll just type font font dash size like so, and then put forty pixels like that, PX, okay? So when I come back here, and there we go. Okay, so as you can see, there's a consistent way uh, we are doing things here. We are putting styles one by one, and slowly but sure, our website is actually coming to life. Okay, so that's it for this particular video. In the next one, we're going to learn how to move forward. Since we already know the basics now, I'm going to speed over in the next video so that we can actually get uh, something that looks like this. All right, I'll see you in the next video.